<laughs> and we're back here at Men 101. Uh, again, Tony D'Amico, Derek Freddy, and again, Justin Finney sitting in for Nick Bass. Nick, hello, man. Everybody's showing up for you, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Good to have you again, Justin. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, it was great to have you last yeah. week, too. It was great yeah. topic and stuff like that. So, um, and guys, a little more soft topic than normal. Our topics have been pretty hardcore the last six, seven shows. Mm -hmm. You know, so we're going to do um, drugs and sport. Does the natural athlete exist? <laughs> especially after the Olympics just ending there, right. you know? So it's been interesting sp with all the controversy with Russia, especially uh, Russia and the Par Paralympics as well. Their, co their whole team was not allowed to appear. Yeah. And then we're just t talking before we came on there, Tony and myself, uh, 2008, uh, uh, an athlete in uh, Cuba, Cuba. Cuba won the, That's right. the discus, right? In 2008 in Beijing, she won the discus and she won silver medal. And uh, they she happened to, you know, she won, she went home, and they redid testings, you know, every couple of years they retest the same sample they had, and she had failed the drug test, and they, uh, she, they asked for the medal back, but she couldn't give it back because she had sold it on eBay <laughs> for uh, $14,000 $14, American, actually. So wow. she made a profit from her medal. Right. I mean, good for her. But she knew she was going to get caught, so that's why she did it. True. Mm -hmm. You asked, and I know it's part of the topic, too, does the the natural athlete exist but can i just stop for one second uh -huh. it's just because we're in october uh -huh. and we're all wearing pink we are. for breast cancer month and uh, my cousin just finished her last treatment about two and a half months ago for breast cancer god bless and mm -hmm. she uh everything went well uh she still you know she has to be reconstruction now and everything but uh, we just want to wish her give her some prayers. You know, everybody think about all the people that are going through uh, a hard time right now for breast cancer this month. Well, as you said, this is the men's show, but we would like to shout out to the females out there. Like, this is the breast cancer month. So we decided, you know, to wear pink and give you guys a shout out. We're thinking of everybody and their families. So you keep up the good work. Hopefully we get a cure for this one day. And I'd like to give one more shout out to my mother-in-law, Cynthia, who is a breast cancer survivor. Excellent. Great. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Like that. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that, that athlete that sold her medal, that's interesting, eh? Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, it's becoming a really <laughs> big problem in sport. Like, not just any sport. They're looking at Rory McIlroy now there, the golfer. Yeah. Then last year, he was doing extremely well, won a bunch of PGA events. Mm -hmm. This year, he's struggling, but his body's completely changed from what it was there last year. So now they're starting to wonder, <laughs> has he taken some time in, uh, type of enhancement? I wasn't aware of this. Yeah. I don't watch golf. That's just I, me. You might not watch golf, okay, so but we yeah. do. Mm -hmm. Okay. Way, he doesn't watch football or golf. I he doesn't even know what a, he doesn't even a wide receiver is. No, no I, <laughs> I'm confused with that. I am. But back to the whole, like, I feel I, 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 that I don't know about. He could be going through personal things. You never know. There's so many different factors when it comes to um, the His body has changed physically. Did he shrink? No, or he's more he's, muscular. Oh. But you said, he's, is he playing better this year? He's not actually, no. So do we think that he's using, I mean, if he's We don't know if he's using, we're not going to accuse Mr. Okay, McElroy right. of Sorry, using Mr. anything. McElroy. We just know that he's, his training regimen has changed, his body has changed, his athletic uh, build, um, um, his body actually is like is more muscular, more defined, which he wasn't that a year or two prior to that. And he was doing extremely well and winning. Um, so like... Doesn't that make you less flexible if you're Well, if you're tighter, so yeah. So it's his golf change right out this ring. But like it's, again, we can go back to the most highlighted athlete, mm -hmm. in, especially in Olympic sport, and you know, Ben Johnson. Yes. That was sure. like like the fastest man. Like, a, like look at this guy. There was nobody would have beaten his record right. to this day. Not even uh, Usain Bolt, I don't think, would to this day would have beaten his record. Usain, okay. Usain Bolt got him. He got him, day. did he? Yeah, it was 979. He's, he's run faster. To add, to add to what you're saying, I mean, just in the last uh, little while, there was, a, and you touched on um, the Paralympic Russian team being, you know, not allowed to attend the Paralympics right. because of the drug situation, state-sponsored drug allegations against, uh, you know, the country of Russia, where, uh, where it was proven that they were KGB under, undercover KGB agents acting as scientists, changing urine samples and holes through walls and all sorts of crazy things that you'd only see in movies. But one guy had a prosthetic. One guy had a prosthetic. <laughs> <laughs> right. So um, there's in recent days there have been um, an activist group out of Russia called Hacktivist, or uh, a hacktivist group rather called Fancy Bear, and what they had done is they had hacked into the World Anti-Doping Association's database 
and found emails pertaining to certain athletes, uh, predominant U.S. athletes, as well as pro some uh, amateur athletes from around countries from around the world, but predominant athletes such as Serena Williams and Venus Williams and uh, Simone Biles, the gymnast from the U.S., um, where they've had clearance from their governing bodies, their international federations, to take certain banned substances that are on the list. And they've been cleared, and they've been cleared from the international federations, from the World Anti-Doping Association, and as well oh. from the IOC. This is what these hackers have done. They've, de mm -hmm. they've brought this out to the forefront. Exactly. They brought that to the forefront in the, in the last little while. And I guess um, my question here to you guys would be, do you find it um, hypocritical? Of to, to, that there are banned substances on a list, but you still allow other people to practice. Let, let's say if they need it for a attention deficit disorder, they need to take a certain drug or whatnot. Do you find that if the if the substances are on a list and they're banned substances, should it be followed to the T, or should there be exceptions given? Okay, so let's we're talking about the natural athlete here, right? right. Or does he exist anymore? Right. Or he or she exist anymore? Right. And, and this is the Olympics. And stuff. If the substances are banned, they're banned. Right. That's right. Pierre de Coubertin. But do we know what these substances <laughs> are? We say that they're banned, but I mean, there are certain antihistamines that may carry something yeah, in it that is banned. You can't use it. But sorry. what if that's the only one that you can use? I mean, that's the window that's then you open. Can't, you, can't, you can't do the You the, can't participate. The so then pretty much most of those athletes cannot technically well, participate. We're, right, but we're, we're under the understanding that these athletes are all tested under all these antihistamines and whatever it may be that they can't participate. Like, so Maria Sharapova is banned from playing tennis now for the last, she's been taking something for the last eight years, and that, should, she not, should she not be stripped of all her titles? Like, no different than a cyclist, and everybody knew the cyclist, um, Lance, Armstrong. Lance, Armstrong. Lance Armstrong was on something. Everybody knew he was on something. Well, now he's been stripped completely. Absolutely, right? with regards to Maria Sharapova, um, it was a meldon meldonium. It, it was the the drug uh, in question, and that I was, was looking for that name. That's it. It was meldonium, and, and it's a and it was a allowed drug forever, um, until January first of two thousand sixteen, where it went on the ban list. Now it wasn't reported by um, her international federation to to the uh, international tennis federation, rather to the ITF, that she was taking still on this drug, and therefore when she got tested and she got uh, she got suspended. And so did two swimmers, prominent swimmers that were allowed back into the Olympics as well, that were on Meldonium. It was predominantly Russian based athletes on Meldonium. You hold on to that thought, Justin. We'll be right back after break with our guest, Mr. Hector Duncan. And it's going to be great because we have an Olympic oh, nice. guy here. Oh, okay. right on. Yeah. See you after the Sounds break. Sounds good. back here and we have a very special guest today actually one of our producers fathers mr. Hector Duncan Hector welcome to the show thank you yeah it's well, a pleasure to have you here uh, Hector is a uh, an uh, resident of Peel for the last 40 years uh, born in Guyana America and migrated to London England in his late teens he's an avid sports enthusiast play played recreational cricket on his uh, his whole life uh, he's also the president of the Heart Lake Sports and Culture Club vice president of Mississauga Ramblers Cricket Club it's a big resume, Mr. Duncan. Yes, a little bit of everything I've done. There you go, there you go. So listen, dr drugs and sports, that's our topic. Um, and you're sitting next to a young man that's been an uh, Olympic coach, so we're all wondering if, if, the, if the natural athlete exists. We know you, you see him bolts a natural athlete, and he exists. Seems to be. Seems to be. Well, right. they tested the yams. They sure. took it and tested the yams, and the right. yams are fine. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so th there's nothing in the yams. But like, Again, we're, we're talking about the, um, we were, we're talking about Ben Johnson there, and he must be one of the most recognizable individuals in the industry that has been never gotten away from that. And then, like, but even back then, they were all at it. Carlos was doing it. Uh, all, them, uh, all the all the guys he ran against were doing it. And then he was the guy that got the, got the spotlight on on the most. Marion Jones done it. Right. So, uh, I've come to the understanding and the belief that let's keep the Olympics, but let's keep it natural. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then how about having another Olympics where take what you want and see who can be the fastest and the best in the world? With all these altered, morphed bodies. Well, right. look at me. Like the all-drug Olympics. The all-drug yeah. Olympics. Let's, 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 yeah. let's see who's the fastest <laughs> individual on the planet when you're 
<laughs> jacked up. <laughs> no? It would be like a Rocky scene, you know, when Drago's working out. The Rocky scene, yeah, the same thing. But like, listen, the, uh, Justin is a big, big time coach, swimming coach and stuff like that. And um, one, of the, the, one of the swimmers way back in what, 2008, was it the Irish swimmer? Uh, back in 1996, and it was uh, Michelle Smith de Bruyne. Irish swimmer, she won. And it's funny you bring her up. She won mm -hmm. four gold. I think it was four, three gold or one one bronze or something, or four gold and one bronze. She was at the time, or still is, I think, the most decorated Irish Olympian ever. Ever mm -hmm. to have ever, you know, come from. But her husband island. was banned from the Olympics, right? Because of drugs, right? Well, here, here's here's the iron. Or how do you feel about this? Here's a woman who goes on two years later. She gets caught for steroids. And gets banned for four years. She's at 28 years old. She's at the end of her career at that time. Um, however, they don't strip her of her medals because she didn't test positive at the games, but she tested positive afterwards, even though hmm. there were there were rumors, rumors, rumors are rumors, but there were rumors of her on deck at, at the Olympics, you know, just because in swimming, you can't just come out of nowhere uh, right. and just explode. So, like, see, you we're have talking to have a, a great a period of yeah. building, right? So, we're talking about the Olympics a lot, but let's, let's, because Mr. Duncan, you're into the cricket side of things, right? And Pro cricket is also a professional sport now today, right? Has yeah. there ever been anything like that in the cricket world? Yes, it's been happening right now um, in all the sports, as a matter of fact. Um, we're finding that uh, drugs has played a part. Uh, someone may think that, you know, why would a cricketer use uh, drugs? Actually, it, uh, it's for training. Uh, some cricketers now, they play to a mature age, to over 35, 36, and uh, training on a regular basis and training very hard by using some of these drugs. Some people look at it as it will make you do better. Some others look at it as it will, if you do, if you train as hard by using some drugs, they've got so many different drugs now, that it will have help you to uh, recoup or help you to get back to, to your normal self that way. Um, not only in cricket, some other sports that I didn't really expect to uh, find drugs in, and it, it's coming up, S swimming, hockey, Every single uh, major sport these days, drugs are involved in it. Yeah, they had a big thing about, they were talking about LeBron James and why these guys didn't show up for the Olympic um, team, for the U.S. team, because they're, maybe some of the stuff that they're taking was bad, but it's just to recuperate after training and stuff like that. But it's still a bad substance, yeah. and you right. can't be in the Olympics right. when these things are banned, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, as again, but as yet, you said, Mr. Duncan, it's, it's in every sport now, like the NFL, hockey, yeah. like, you can look at the athlete and you'll see uh, just looking at an athlete we're not physically we can get to a certain right. physicality mm -hmm. then all of a sudden we excel and you you start getting like limper christie he was the, the older he got but the that better whole he got final was juiced i mean if you want to look at it let's use our common sense let's just talk as as men here right that whole that whole final was juiced carl lewis limper limper christie uh Adel bolden i mean right. and the list goes on there i mean um, you know, where, where, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about an athlete like uh, Justin Gatlin? Justin Gatlin was uh, suspended uh, for six years from international competition after he tested positive after the Olympics in 2008 and was stripped of his world record and his, I believe his medals, if I'm not mistaken. Um, served his time, came back, was second to, to, to Usain Bolt in, in the 100. At, two th at the 2016 Olympics, right. just now, uh, running just as fast, if not faster, than what he did back when he was caught, and he would have won a bronze medal on the four by 100 had they not got disqualified, the, the U.S. team. So my question to you is, how do you feel about how do you feel about that? Letting someone back in and, and them who had got caught twice was his second offense when he got suspended for six years. <laughs> I find it funny. I think it's funny because it, 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 he's been caught twice. Right. He did Six exceptionally years. well yep. this year, once again. So he got caught twice in 08. Yes. Got a six-year suspension, uh -huh. stripped of his world record, and I believe stripped of his medals. Right. If I'm not mistaken there. And then he comes back, makes the team in 16. Yes. And wins a silver medal, running just as fast, if not faster, in the 100 behind Usain Bolt. So this is my whole thing, is do, in my eyes, it looks like he just got him and his team, because it's a team we all know, got perhaps a little bit more clever. Possibly. Is that just me? Would that, would you, so what would you think, uh, Mr. Duncan, do you think um, 
It's something to do with the, the governing bodies? I think the governing bodies have got a lot to play in because uh, you find that most athletes that have been found uh, at fault and has been allowed to come back into the game are from you know the big countries like the United States have you. They're only now stepping down and start uh, pulling down on, say, Russia. Uh, apparently, another thing that, I, that I'm finding a little bit disgusting is that you find that there are so many drugs on the market right now that these athletes are using. Some, yes, you can use for you know, whatever reason, colds or flus or what have you, and another, uh, another athlete may be using the same drug, and you could find that it can then cause or what have you. The drugs are being labeled now, I think, you know, exactly what they put on them, but they do have labels on them, and uh, it's, a, it's a large amount. Um, I honestly tend to agree with you earlier on, maybe um, they should allow athletes to, um, I don't want to say do whatever, right. but see what happens. Uh, en enhanced and non-enhanced. Yeah. Well, you know, to see exactly how far an athlete can go, That's and uh, then we will definitely know for sure that, um, yes, drugs do make an athlete run faster, We'll be right back with this right after the break. Right back to this topic. Great topic. Thanks, Mr. Donga. Great. Great. back. Listen, uh, we, just had, we have great topics that when, we, when we break. Mr. Doug was just talking about the Paralympics. What was that you were saying? Well, in the 1500 meters, uh, there were three or four athletes that had the faster time than the regular athletes in the World Championships and the 1500 meters, time-wise. So, the actual fact, if we are talking about drugs, I'm not sure if these athletes, right, in the Paralympics, if they took drugs, to actually have gone faster than the regular athletes. But then I think what it is, again, more so, it's uh, the essence is on winning on, I think, the able-bodied athletes. Instead of like running as fast as they can, we're just pacing themselves, trying to finish for a second or third. But it still, it still bothers me to, uh, to find out how can an athlete who is not fully in that sense of being called an able-bodied athlete, right can go that fast. fast. Mm -hmm. So, right. so it's, it, it could be, it could, I mean, I, I haven't read up on it, we discussed it, and it, it could be performance enhancing, however, um, they could have been on the prosthetics as well as that South African runner yes. was yes. in the Olympics yes. now. Yes. I'm not sure if those, if those runners were, were using prosthetics that, you know, I don't now they they they're like they they provide a lot of spring and a lot of and, and a lot of coverage more of distance yeah. and especially as you go a longer distance, if you're looking at a hundred, you may not be able to generate the speed that you need to to be faster than an able-bodied right, person. Right. However, over a fifteen hundred, you know, you may be able to sustain and have longer strides. It'd be good over to see that. It'd be good to see yeah. that race to see what the stride is different when you see it, like the, the comparison between the stride with that prosthetic and the stride sure. with. Um, your legs is a different. A There's a different YouTube video you can see it. Yeah. One guy's like it's uh, regular, and the other guy has a prosthetic legs, and he's got the new ones. You know, like they're all carbon fiber and stuff. Yeah. And, and he zoomed right by mm -hmm. the uh, regular athlete. Mm -hmm. But that's a great point that you made. Well, well, yeah, but actually, in the 1500 meters, I'm not quite sure if uh, all these athletes were, you know, actually running right on a on level of place right. or if they sure. had any aid, but. It still bothers me to the point of like saying when well, we were talking about drugs and athletes. Yeah. Uh, the first thing that came to mind were these athletes' drugs, but yeah, it's not. It, it goes uh, for everybody. Absolutely. I know the old Russian team was banned from um, you know from the Special Olympics, and uh, the reason for that, I guess again, it was uh, you know drug inducer drug taking. So, uh, like for an instance, I even let's take the, the, the gym, g gymnastics, right. and they and they stunt their growth in, in the likes of China and these places. So these these young women and young men don't grow to their their proper potential. So they give them something. So so there's a there's a it's not a banned substance, but they're doing something that they shouldn't be doing to the athletes. Well, so I they're better when they're smaller. Mm -hmm. Well, right. yeah, for sure. I mean, it, it's, um, I don't think there's anything Ill illegal, however, in doing that. I think it's a difference in culture. Well, you know Chinese uh, culture in terms of how they run their, their their sports programs and the and send young kids to sports schools and take them away from the parents to try to find the best athlete 
best gymnast, best swimmer, best you know shot putter, best yeah, but that's not high jumper. Right. I know, but that that's a cultural thing. I don't find that that's something really that has to pertain to to uh, to so to a drug to using illegal drugs. I agree with that. Yeah. So yeah. like like I was like I like the Olympics is a really good place like a, a landmark yeah. to talk about stuff because. I'm also at the point where I'm like, why would you send a professional athlete to the Olympics? Well, because like Cooper Tang came up with it for the spirit of the games. Correct. So now we're sending professional golfers, we're sending professional basketball, basketball players, players, we're yeah. sending professional soccer players. These are not these are great Olympic sports, but why send a pro you're getting paid now? Yeah. You're out of the market. Right. Why not send a college athlete that's not on something, or maybe if he's on something, who knows? But let's send a college athlete back there. That that the, the hockey player, the hockey. Mm -hmm. the, let's send these athletes under to compete. We don't need to see professionals. I was, you know, Freud Weymether would never fight certain boxers because they were enhanced by taking uh, steroids and stuff Allegedly, like that. Allegedly, right. Well, well sure. he, they, were ta they were tested when they were in their prime, certain right. guys. He would not fight right. because he wasn't getting paid millions of dollars. Why would you go into the ring with somebody that's your same weight class, but he's been taking something right. that enhances his physical strength and his aggression, and I'm a natural guy, and I've been tested all the time. Yeah. And I might get hit by you and knocked out and left in a wheelchair or something for the rest of my life, and my career is over. Well, you're yeah. now. So he fought guys after they were cleaned up, yeah. and he still beat them. Sure. So right. why don't we have a? Why don't we have the? I say the non. Uh, Olympics where it's just. Take well, call, call them. Call them the World Games, and you put all the professionals in there, and there it's the go. World Games, and then you leave the Olympics for the amateurs. Because yeah. the, the Olympics has changed, like the face of the Olympics when you actually watch it now. I found when I was growing up watching Olympics, you didn't see the celebrities in sport that you do now. Novak Djokovic playing in the Olympics, well, like that's, that's huge. Thing, right? Like, yeah. and so the amateur athlete coming up to play tennis against no, it's a, it's a different story. So the, the the bodies are bringing in professional athletes to bring more people to the right. to the industry. So, like, Hector, do you find that uh, um, when you're when the younger athletes or younger people playing any type of sport, would they be? Is there government bodies that keep an eye on this stuff to keep these kids safe? Well, in my day, growing up, um, we never really had anything that uh, government or coaches what have you you go out there you play the sport if you were good enough you'll be selected by your school your college or your country but you mentioned uh, something earlier on there alan the uh, professionals who are coming into the olympics but boxes are not allowed professional boxes are not allowed right. in in that sport another thing that i find a little bit troubling because i am an avid cricketer is that there's no cricket in the olympics it's right yet. and uh, i wonder if you have but soccer why? you have Could all these other games and and i do wonder exactly why and when you know and they just included golf that's a great point yeah, yeah, but golf used to be in it and they took it out that's and they true. brought it back right. but he's okay. right he's a great point because right. they, they have they could have sevens cricket i don't know if that exists or whatever but you could have a sevens team like they have in the rugby does well yes yes, yes you yes. can cut it down but then uh they have the, the, uh, the limited overs uh stuff right See. so so yeah so yeah, yeah that's a great point so why have they not introduced cricket into the olympics like i said golf or or, or or all these other sports. Well, they, baseball got taken out. They've baseball. got all the other games there. Yeah. Yeah. Baseball was in it, but they took it out. I what have the answer. answer. Did they take baseball? You have the answer, this Justin? Yeah, yeah, was yeah, was yeah. Baseball, yeah. What's the answer, Justin? I, I have the answer to, to this whole debate. It, it's it's all about revenue. Yes. I, I mean, if we, if you were to split the Olympics, I mean, the Olympics, uh, you're ha we're all 100%, right? It's not amateur anymore. It's not an amateur. Olympics was founded based on amateur principles, right? And so the best amateur athletes that weren't being paid professional money would be able to come in and you can showcase your amateur athletes from your country and that's when you took when you know as we were growing up we took more pride in our country and our, uh, our amateur athletes now the money aspect of it has taken over cricket should it be in the olympics i think absolutely 100 percent. why not is it a revenue sport no is golf become a revenue sport yes and so when you're and you have all these high profile athletes with high profile endorsement deals that are allowed to go to the olympics and be able to generate you know, millions and tens or hundreds of millions of dollars for their federations or for their endorsement uh, on their endorsement deals or whatnot. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a it's a win win. Right. So I think that if you were, it, you'll never be able to split um, the the to have an all drug Olympics and the amateur Olympics because you just they just want to do one where you they can maximize. You hold on to that point because you're going to come right yeah. back, and I think Mr. Duncan might disagree with you that it's not a, pro a professional sport. That's exactly. We'll be right back after That's the break with us, and Mr. Duncan, and what he has to say. Oh, I. I
Yeah, we're back here again. So listen, uh, so as I was saying, Justin, I actually believe you're wrong about the revenue cricket, and I'm sure Mr. Duncan knows a lot more about cricket and whether to bring in a absolutely. revenue. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely is the word. <laughs> um, cricket right now, I think, uh, especially in India and Pakistan, out in Asia, is one of the most uh, largest or biggest uh, revenue uh, money making thing, I especially correct, for yes, television, for television rights. Right. Uh, Cricket is also big in Australia. Cricket is also True. big in England. Mm -hmm. But the point we were trying to make is, is, is earlier on is why can they not? I, I, for all the things I've been reading up, they've never had cricket in the Olympics. See, th here's the great thing. So you have all you've mentioned a lot of big countries and they all play cricket and it all has a big, huge revenue. So would you would you not think? Which, but we're getting a little off topic. We're talking about drugs here, but let's let's bring in the revenue. So would you not think bringing in cricket into the Olympics? would bring in revenue, Justin? Imagine, think of the countries, India, Australia, I, I can't yeah. say Pakistan. No. I can't say no. Because this uh, is their but, sport. But I, I mean, I can't, s I mean, what is, is it a global phenomenon? That, that, that it's can not touch not everyone North globally? American it's not a North side. American that's thing is what that's we're, that's, good, not, that's a good point. You're right, it's it not a North American right. thing. Is it, is it a European thing? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's very big. I, I'm not I'm asking. Not I all of Europe. Not all of Europe, but, but it's more. It's worldwide. Yeah. Yeah. They do have yeah. the World Cup of Cricket. Now, like I said from the beginning, do I think uh, okay, uh, so cricket should be in the Olympics? Of course. Okay, so, so you take rugby, for example. They put the I was rugby. just using golf as a parallel. Right. Right. But the difference is money, right? Now, we but know that we, we the, the revenue of cricket might be huge in um, everywhere else other than North America. Right. right. But what are the endorsements like? within that like it, there's, it, there's a does lot that they make have it? all equipment they got everything so that said and you touched on something mm -hmm. earlier do you think that there is a lot of corruption that's happening with that money and the ioc and all of that that trickles down well i wouldn't be able to uh, actually say there, there's corruption but there's corruption in all sports so Absolutely. there's corruption in the ioc is what you're saying so what we've actually seen, you know, some some people have been charged, fined, barred, what have you. There's corruption in all sports. Because it I sounds think. like to me, um, as you mentioned before, Justin, uh, this I'm not sure if it was on air or during a break, but those three athletes, three of my favorites, um, Simone Biles and the Williams sisters, were allowed to use certain banned substances. Um, and that's that was okayed via email transaction by their federation. By the federation. By their respective federations. Exactly. The IOC and the World Anti Doping Association. And these are some of the biggest athletes in the world. Right. Um, do you think that that was made an exception because of the revenue that they bring and the attention that they bring to not just the sport of tennis but to the Olympics? First of all, that information that came out it was not. Um, an information that should have been out. Yes. Right. Uh, there was agreed. Ha those hackers that went in and got Yes, exactly. Yes, exactly. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and I'm quite sure that if you actually got into other athletes, right. emails and, and what have you, yes. you will find that or even more. Agreed. Right. Uh, I know my buddy touched there on the on the Russian tennis player. Yes. Um, but she was allowed to, yes, mm -hmm. that's the name, she was allowed to use a certain drug at first, but she thought that she had you know, some sort of a, a, a minor ailment, mm -hmm. and uh, she was only supposed to use it for a couple of months, and she continued using it for over ten years. Huh. Right, she did. Right. She was baseball. caught, and yeah, and now she was being, you know, no, right now she's been suspended. But she hasn't been uh, stripped of anything. N no. So I here's we go back to the double standard. Hmm. Lance Armstrong was stripped of everything. Ben Johnson However, was stripped. Yes. Okay, but Lance Armstrong made a lot of money. But, he still has that money. But hold on, the e the sure. the EPO that they uh, you know EPO which they got caught for, which Lance got caught for, in the end, um, was a banned substance. Meldonium only became banned January first of this year. So why would they ban the meldonium? Well, what is here, the here's what is it? here. I mean, I ha I'm just going to tell you what I have looked up on meldonium, and basically, um, it's uh, in. It says here it's used to treat the lack of blood flow to the body for angina and heart failure. That's what the drug was originally uh, designed for uh, back in Latvia, which was under the former USSR back in the 70s. So for blood flow. Correct. Well, so, so what, what it does, does it do? Okay. She claims that she took it for a mag magnesium deficiency. 
That's why she had taken mm -hmm. it for these ten uh, for ten, over ten years. Um, it's not approved by the FDA, and it's only used in Baltic countries. And it basically what it does is it increases the overall endurance and speed uh, uh, of recovery time as well. So you're cheating. And it inc it increases the 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 oxygen flow to the body. Cool. So, so you're but cheating. It's, it's innate. So that's cheating. That or that's a, that's why it became a banned substance. But that's why I'm saying, why do we not have the World Olympics? Let's call it the World Olympics, and let's see what you right. can do. But and I think become it's so difficult to do that just because there are so many. You have different brands that you can go into a health food store and grab. But for athletes know recovery. that they can't take certain brands. I know, I know that. But there's like as a, as an Olympic guy, Justin. As uh, yeah. You would know. Your athletes would know. Right. And you would have a list that they cannot touch. Correct. So then why would an athlete go back in and take something knowing that but that's But what I'm saying is that it's ever it. evolving, is it not? Well, why would an international federation li um, like the Rush, like not inform, you know, the International Tennis Federation that she is continuing to use meldonium to get her a waiver like yes. they've gotten for Simone and for both Williams sisters and whatnot, you know, I mean, uh, why would they, did, that's the problem here. The problem with the meldonium issue is that um, there, there was, uh, I forget which games it was, but 13 out of 21 medalists uh, thir were uh, tested positive for meldonium that were predominantly Russian and their federations did not, this is after January 1st, this happened in the last, uh, what is it now, nine months, or, and they did not declare that they were still taking this meldonium until they got caught. Same thing with, same thing with Sharapova. Why, if Sharapova knew that in January first she was meldonium was going to be illegal, why would you continue? To why take would it? you continue to take? Why would you not report that you need to take it for your magnesium deficiency? But even if you report it, you're you're cheating. So you're ahead well, of hold everybody on. Then else. That means then that means Venus and yes. Serena. Okay. You should you should yep. if you're on something you can't play. Uh, I'm sorry. You can You know what? You can take it and perform in the professional ring. Right. But you can't perform in the Olympics because do we know what right. they were on? Because those three names were the ones that just came up. All but of they're a actually sudden. not the ones that came out. I think Justin said there's another 25 released. Yes, but I'm talking about the three initial ones that they threw out there, like. Wait. Yeah, but these uh, uh, the drugs that they they actually showed there, it was not an illegal drug. And that's what I'm saying. In the sense of the Olympics, but it's just the put it this way. I think the Russians were trying to say, well, you you were banning some of our athletes. Yes. And because they were using absolutely this, fat, this drug, and here we can show the Plus. world or show you that you also have one hundred percent that are using some drugs that we consider, although the uh, the association doesn't actually say well this is the band. We hold that thought, exactly Mr. Duncan. We'll be right back after the break. We're back here with our internet se section. You have a question there, Mr. Duncan. Yes, I've got a question here from Ricky from Alberta. Uh, this is a young person, and he asked the question, how widespread are drugs among younger players? Uh, actually, in the case, Ricky, I would say that drugs are out there, but I wouldn't actually advocate that younger people try to uh, imitate the older ones. Uh, he went on to actually say, I'm a young boy. I'm looking to be successful. And when you're young, you, you really care about winning. That's what we find these days in all sports. Winning is now becoming the, the uh, number one, what have you. Even in my favorite sport, cricket, you, you have the, uh, the positions of finishing first, second, third, what have you. And cricketers will do any and everything just to win. Ricky, all I would say is that you try to listen to your coaches, hope your coach is not someone who is inclined to, to say that you must win, and you go along naturally, and if you are a good athlete, I always believe in that, that good athletes are born, you can train and what have you to, to make yourself better. But um, in actually trying to say, I will emulate or try to do what the professional athletes are doing, or I don't really like to use the word cheaters or the one who's cheating or what have you. 
but do not try to even think about it. That's all I can say on this one here, here. particular yeah, matter. Yeah, well done. Yeah. Yeah. I had a question from uh, Susan from uh, Toronto. Toronto. Uh, what are some of the side effects for adult players that are using steroids? Side effects. Well, I'm sure they would. Certain types of steroids would actually lead to cancers, uh, maybe uh, organ failure, liver damage. Um, That's the first thing. I mean, I mean, uh, side effects could be acne, could be uh, organ failure, could be you know even liver. Like well, liver, 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 liver damage one. is liver huge. Is Listen, well, let's let's take a, a sport. Is it a sport? Bodybuilding. Right. Arnold Schwarzenegger back in sure. the day, Lou Ferrigo, yeah. all these guys. Yeah. And I remember growing up in, 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 the, in the Northern Ireland, and uh, you lived in the UK yourself, Mr. Duncan, a long time ago. They had a program called World in Action. Right. And they one time they, they looked at a young athlete, 21 year old athlete, who was taking multiple steroids. And they were recording this young gentleman, and he was having roid rages. So he'd walk up and he'd bang his head off the wall. Right. He'd done it so much at one point, he killed himself. Well, mm. So these are the effects that you don't know so, the yeah. body yeah. is taking. Side you hear that yeah. a lot in wrestling. In wrestling, yeah. Yeah. when your wrestlers kill themselves because they, they have a hard time dealing with them, you know, with their anger and they're they're going crazy. Oh, like, and yeah. all those and all concussions those as well. Yeah. 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 So steroids. Like I mean, yeah. uh, this is the thing. These these drugs that we're taking or the young athletes are taking, whether it's in a professional sport or an amateur sport, the side effects we don't know. Right. They don't know. You don't know later on in life. Right. Uh, right at the at the time you're and this right now, it's awesome. you're taking a chance with your right. life. You only have mm -hmm. one life. Right. You know, it's okay. great to be a professional athlete or an Olympian, but there's an expense. There's something you'll pay for it in the long run. If you if you cheat, you might end up getting some type of damage. Right. You might not. But would you take that chance that maybe you'll get sick, maybe not, but you're going to make those millions of dollars like these a lot of baseball players that took steroids. There's a great there's a great example. Yeah, they took a lot of these steroids just, and they made a lot of money, yep. and you don't see them no more, you hear nothing, and well, they're the living the, the glamorous turned, life. The, the, well, the league turned a blind eye to them. Yes. Right? Some, of, uh, some of them were still so allowed them to make money. Yes. 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 On, and others were bad. And $120 million. Was it Mark McGuire? One? Was that Mark, Mark yeah. McGuire? Yeah. Sam Mark Sosa, Sam, yes. Barry Bonds, wow. Barry, Barry Bonds Roger Clemens, too. Jason yeah. Giambi, and the list goes on. The Barry Bonds had a good time. That is so yeah. sad. Sorry. Who denied? Who is Barry denied. Bonds had a, a tough time to get his name cleared, yeah. while others were allowed to still play on. And, right. Uh, yeah. So so are we not? We So what we should be, hopefully the federations that w these sports are that are controlled by have to now take a stance they have to take a stand, and uh, you know, look. I think it's sad. I mean, I'm. It is sad. Sorry, I, I'm not gonna cut you off. It just hit me. It's yeah. like it's like the natural athlete that's sure. so so good, yeah. mm -hmm. and he's so talented, mm -hmm. male or female, and he you can't beat him. But then he's up against guys that are taking stuff. How is he supposed to beat that other athlete? Right. Well, that's exactly the problem we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, a huge problem. If he knows or reads or hears that this person is taking substance one, whatever. I cannot beat him. You know what? I'll try something for him yeah. to see if I could even get equal or the the equal. He's going to yeah. go past that athlete but because he's already. So it's he very important so. for all of us, and I know you'll agree with me on this, that we fight the drug movement here, the, the performance enhancing drugs. We don't allow performance enhancing drugs to win. I mean, what do you say to those athletes that have lost out, that will not get their medal, will not get their. Take, it, tell me, show the broom. Two Canadian girls that were in the 200 individual medley in 1996, one of them was Marion Limpert, finished uh, a mere four tenths of a second behind Michelle Debrun for the gold medal, won the silver. She missed out on her, her opportunity, clean athlete. And Joanne Millar finished fourth in that same event. She would have won the bronze. And the only reason there was a problem with with yeah. the Irish swimmer doing that. An Ontario-based swimmer, by the way, born and raised. Yeah, and, and I think because the United States kicked up that there's no way this woman come out of nowhere and all of a sudden, for sure, I think somebody had said at one time they tested her her urine and it was like drinking a bottle of Jameson. Right. Not the not Jameson. Wow. But that's what Good they had said, you know? <laughs> like, like, you know? Yeah, it's horrible. So, uh, there's a point I wanted to, to bring up again. I cannot remember the South African uh, athlete's name, the 800 meter runner. And, right. Um, yeah, we're having some problems. Uh, at one time, they thought maybe she was using. The woman. The woman, yeah. yeah. She that was using some. Testosterone. Whatever, but it right. wasn't. It wasn't right. that. I really? thought it was yeah, uh, how, she, um, how she was born. Her body. She, yeah. Yeah, born she just had a more more male hormone in her body than that's a right. yeah. no. But you're born that way. That's a difference. That's, that's, exactly that's completely different. But then again, she went through so, so much. much. She did. That's correct. Won. 
she actually won the gold medal. Yeah. And she um, still yeah, got such Olympics. horrible, like, uh, the the stigma that, that kind of right. followed her was, I found very unfair um, for something that she's just, she's her natural body, this is her body. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, th I feel it's really, they were saying that she, can, she should compete with the men. Um, so with that said, how early does um, education on drugs, do, do you know, does, do any of us know this, how early the education on drug or performance enhancing drugs starts in athletes, A, and B, how early does that testing start? It should be a gazette teacher talking to their students. But you that, have right? athletes who are... Phys ed wasn't, like, I mean, you, you have athletes that you start off young and so you're in this specialized right. world from a very young age. You're not looking up to your phys, a phys ed teacher, you're looking up to your coaches. And so how early do they implement the knowledge and how early do they start testing? Well, it all depends, uh, again, on uh, the coach here, what have you. It's all the, where the coach What's wants the to go. Buddy? It's a job owner. Yeah. And the guy. if he gets his athletes up or He'll get the students up to Listen, Mr. Duncan, we have to come right back after the break. Thanks for having me on the show, Hector Duncan. Back with a musical guest right after this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And we're back here with our musical guest, Gianni Badeau, and his buddy, Albi, who's on stage waiting for him to perform. Listen, um, singer, songwriter, based in Montreal, recording and performing over two decades. Uh, Gianni is just, uh, by the way, Fade to Rose, great. We're going to listen to this after. Thank you very much for giving us all a copy. Thank you. Uh, new single release party coming up as a performance in the Monster sh Show at the Leonardo Da Vinci Center December this year. Oh, I've, I've got a, a brand new single, actually. Oh, you do? I'm releasing a brand new single on October 25th at the La Sala Rosa, a very mythical uh, room in Montreal where Arcade Fires uh, played uh, often. And I'm releasing a brand new single called Arcadia. Wow. If you guys are up in Montreal, you're welcome to. I've got well, you got a couple of Montreal boys sure. here with said. Yeah. yeah. So to love, sure, love to yeah. have yeah, you. Love to go. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, your background, you're a teacher, ex-principal? Yeah, I'm still a teacher, ex-principal. Uh, and... Uh, you know, and I had to let go of being a principal for a while so I could play at being a rock star and try <laughs> <laughs> You look like a rock star. Yeah. You got the hair, man, and the yeah. beard. It's yeah. all good. How does that fly with your students? I feel like they feel you're probably pretty cool. Yeah, I don't, I don't, think, they, I don't think they can see it, you know. <laughs> they remove the earrings and they... Right, okay. Yeah, they remove the earrings and wear a proper suit. And right, like so no right. guitars walking into class. No, no, but we do do songs with the kids. We do stuff. We do interesting things with That's the kids. Cool. Yeah. So awesome. your genre of music, what is it exactly? I would think I think it's uh, pop rock. It's accessible stuff. It's easy listening. You know, nothing. Like you too. Like oh, it, it exactly. You, you just flattered me. <laughs> I feel <laughs> stuff. Uh, yeah. um, uh, inspirations. Yeah, well, you know, I'm, I'm a, a huge U2 fan. I've been a U2 fan for a long, long time. I uh, loved uh, con contemporary music. I like. I love the National. Um, I love, you know, I, I, I love Sarah McLaughlin, who's, because I've worked with uh, her, her producer, I, you know, I, I, love, I love what she does. I love all kinds of music. Um, I'm a music aficionado. Cool, cool, cool. I like that term. Well, Claude Rajat, you know, music aficionado, and the legendary Claude Rajat from Music Plus said, you are a more accessible Patrick Watson, and Quebec Spot Media called you one of 2014's biz biggest musical revelations. Very high praise for you and your album, Fade to Rose. So tell us a little bit more about it. Well, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm blessed to have made this, this record, which I'm, I'm very, very proud of. I had uh, some very high profile collaborators on the record. I had uh, Pierre Marchand, who's nice. worked with, uh, obviously produced all of Sarah McLaughlin's records, who helped me out. He's a great friend. I've had Colm Devlin from Ireland, from the Irish band, the Devlins, who's helped me out. Oh, wow. I have Fred Bouchard, which Bouchard, which is one of my uh, producers who uh, works with Adam Cohen, and he's worked with Jason Bajad in Quebec. Wow. Uh, I have uh, Francois Carrier, who plays saxophone in two tracks, and he's 
one of the best saxophone players in the world. I see mm. Downbeat Magazine had called him, you know, the 13th best sax player in the world. Wow, so you have a lot of flavors that you brought together to, to bring this album to where you want it to be. I did, I did, I did. I, I feel very uh, lucky and blessed to have been able to work with all these people. Oh, amazing. Well, congrats. That's awesome. That's a lot Thank of talent much. packed into one album. It is, it, it is, and, and, and most, of, most of this talent comes from having, you know, a few drinks with people, and then you can <laughs> convince them to do a lot of things. Yeah, pretty much. Have, yeah. yeah, having a drink, or a coffee, and... Yeah, yeah. yeah so what, coffee. Yeah. Yeah. what song uh, you want to perform for us this evening? Uh, this evening, I'm going to perform for you, uh, maybe tonight, uh, which is uh, uh, one of it's more my, my favorite song on the record, and... Uh, and for, uh, like, reason for that song? I mean, uh, female... Are, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it is. It is about a female. <laughs> <laughs> it's always about a female. Yeah. All artists have the same issue. Yeah. You get successful when a woman does something to a man, and all of a sudden. So listen, we're going to come back with uh, Giuliani's performance. We're looking forward to hearing it. Thank you to my guest, Mr. Hector Duncan, my one of my good friends, Justin Finney, for sitting on the panel. Giuliani's back. It's no surprise every morning to the last of all her thoughts She wakes up brought back by her favorite drug It's a bitter pill And she knows it at the face up to the truth She tried to claim her like she's already gone She's waiting for to give herself away She hopes he'll realize before he fades To let her fly let it fly. Fly, fly, fly. Fly, fly, fly. Anywhere she wants to. Everywhere she wants to. Fly to where she wants. Fly to where she wants. Everywhere. She pretends there's an exit and an angel at the door They take her baggage to another floor She never sleeps, cause it scares her Like the dream of colored lights It's so much easier when it's so black and white She's waiting for to give herself away She hopes he'll realize before he fades Shown light, so let her fly, let her fly, 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 anywhere she wants to, everywhere she wants to, let her fly to where she wants, let her fly. So she tries, she holds on so tight. She hopes that tonight, maybe tonight, she hopes that she
she'll find. 